Ho, 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 Merry Christmas and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Today we're gonna to be making a Christmas pudding. I know it's too early for a Christmas pudding, guys, but please forgive me, you've got to be making those Christmas puddings nice and early. Really, we should have done this last Christmas. You should make your Christmas puddings the year before for the next Christmas. They get stronger and richer and more flavorsome. So let me show you how I'm gonna make this gorgeous, rich Christmas pudding. Now a really delicious Christmas pudding needs a whole... Now do you think I've still got the hat on? I do still have the hat on. <laughs> a really delicious Christmas pudding has to have a whole load of different ingredients in it to make it great. I'm not going to go through the actual quantities here. I'm going to be making two lots of Christmas pudding. The ingredients here are for one Christmas pudding. Okay, so if you want to do what I'm doing, you'll double up on everything that's here. I will put the exact amounts in the description bar down below, and I might even put them up on screen. We've got suet here. That's a beef suet. You can use a vegetarian suet if you prefer, but it tastes delicious with beef suet. We've got breadcrumbs, soft breadcrumbs. We've got a dark, rich brown Muscovy sugar here. So we've got a plain flour here, just an all-purpose flour. And then we've got candied peel gives a really distinct flavour. And here I've got, this isn't raisins here or, or things, this is mixed fruit. It's got little cherries and bits of uh, raisins and sultanas. Got a couple of eggs. Our herbs we're using are nutmeg, fresh nutmeg if you can get it, grind it down. Uh, cinnamon, a little bit of salt. I've got a carrot here that I'm going to be grating up. We're going to be using the zest and the juice from this orange. A lemon, again, the zest and the juice. Cooking apples if you can get them. I couldn't, so I've got a Granny Smith. But uh, cooking apples if you can get them, nothing too big. One small cooking apple. Dark treacle. You want dark treacle, it adds to the richness and the flavor. And you will want a little alcohol. I'm gonna be using um, actually an Arrack whiskey here, but you can use brandy, not a lot of it, just to add a little flavor to the Christmas pudding. Now I've taken my orange and I've cut it in half because I'm going to use one half for my second put. This one is for the, the first pudding and I'm just using a zester to take off the zest and I'm going to be taking the juice out of this as well. And then I'm going to be doing the same thing with the lemon over here. So there you are, same thing with the lemon, cut in half and I'm just taking the zest off. All this zest is absolutely delicious, it's going in our Christmas pudding. Okay, the first part of this recipe is just mixing everything together in the right order. So we're going to take our breadcrumbs, pop those into the mixing bowl, our suet, that goes in there, and then all that dried fruit, that's going in as well at this point. You do need a big mixing bowl, I'm probably even going to run out of space a little bit with this one. Now in goes the flour, and at this point we can just start to mix this all through. So probably the simplest way to mix this through is just use your fingers and draw everything through like that. So when all those are mixed together, we can start introducing a little bit of liquid. I've got all my juice from my orange and my lemon. That's half a lemon, half an orange, large orange, and the peel from those two. That can go in there now. Let's get it all in there, we want all the flavor. And we just start to mix that through. And at this point, we can also add the, I've grated up the carrot and the apple. So that's been grated and that's one whole apple and about uh, a medium sized carrot. And that goes into the bowl as well. Start to mix that through. I think you can still use your hands at this point. So as that starts to draw together, I'm just gonna put my dark brown sugar into this now. And I'm also going to add the candied peel. As I say, all the ingredients are down below, all the measurements for this pudding, down below in the description bar. And I'm gonna be making this twice today. I'm gonna to be doubling up on this and making a second pudding. And if, if I was not doing it for you guys, I'd probably do the whole thing in one hit. So you can see you're starting to get a real rich mixture now. We can add two eggs into the uh, mixture and all of our flavoring, our, our nutmeg, our cinnamon, we've got a pinch of salt, and then the all important dark treacle, and I'm gonna put a tablespoon of that into there as well. 
And then we're going to bind it all together. I'm going to use a wooden spoon for this. This really starting to smell like Christmas now. At the moment you'll see it's quite a light brown colour, but when this Christmas pudding is cooked and matured, it's going to be a dark, dark plum pudding colour. And that all important little bit of alcohol, it wouldn't be Christmas without it. We're going to put about a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of brandy or whiskey. And just one final stir just to incorporate that all the way through. Right, there you have it. That's the rich Christmas pudding mix. And now you can decide if you want to sit that. Ideally, I would recommend you sit that overnight and let all the flavors mix in before we go to the cooking stage. But with this one, I'm gonna go straight in with the cook. I'll do that with my second Christmas pudding. Now you need a Christmas pudding basin or a pudding basin. Now I've got a litre basin here. If you ever buy those supermarket Christmas puddings, keep those little plastic containers. They're great for cooking your own Christmas puddings in. So now I'm gonna put this into the container. So we want to pack this in nice and tight. There should be just about enough. Remember the pudding rises a little bit. I'll keep a little bit back there. Now your Christmas pudding is nicely in the basin like that and we need to make a little greaseproof paper top for that. And the simplest way for you to do that is take a little bit of greased paper and we're just going to fold it in half and then fold it again. And then keep doing that until you end up with a fairly thin cone. Yeah, you've got that nice little pointed aeroplane shape and then take your bowl, go roughly into the center and we're just going to snip that off across like so. And what you're left with is a perfect little round grease proof top, if I can get it undone. There you go, and that sits on top of your pudding, like so. Now once your pudding is covered, you need to put a lid on it. Now whether you use foil, and you could make a little foil cover for this and leave a little bit of air in there so that the pudding can rise. Now we're very lucky, we've got proper purpose made uh, pudding dishes, so we're just gonna pop the little canvas and tie it. So it goes into the pressure cooker. There's a little trivet here that just holds the pudding off the bottom and out of the water. Into there, one hour cooking, and that'll be all ready. So I'm gonna cook this baby now, and then we've got another one coming on the way, and when that's all cooked, I'll take it out. But we're not tasting it today, guys. This one is for Christmas, so be patient. Okay, our Christmas pudding is out of the pressure cooker, or it's finished in the pressure cooker. I'm just gonna take it out now. It's still piping hot, and we're just going to take the cover off, because we want to refresh the little wax paper that's on the top, the little greaseproof paper. So let's have a look at this now. So we just take off this. Now you can see there, now the Christmas pudding at the moment is a lot lighter than it will be when it's finally matured. And I've got another piece of wax paper. Now, it smells absolutely delicious, but a new piece of fresh wax paper on top, and then we'll give this uh, cover a little wash through, and we're gonna cover it over again and pop it away in a dark, cool area until Christmas time. So, I'm sorry guys, this is not a taster this time. It's just ready for Christmas. I'm not even gonna break into this and have a little sample. You guys are gonna to have to be patient. Get and make your Christmas puddings though. They really are great if you make them this time of year or even earlier in the year ready for Christmas. Thanks for watching. I'll put the subscribe button. There'll be loads more Christmas recipes, by the way, as we get a little nearer to the, uh, the Christmas season. And I don't wanna upset you all by saying Christmas is on its way, but it is on its way. Be good, see you next time. But if you do want to see what they're going to look like, take a look here.